As America loses its manufacturing base, our debt spin out of control, and our exports do nothing but coast in the luck of a weakening dollar, China lurks in the background, ready to take its place as the world's biggest economy. What do we have that the world wants? What's that last commodity that makes the world say, yeah, make mine American? Comedy. It's our exclusive asset that the rest of the world hasn't yet figured out how to efficiently recreate or manufacture, and one that Yvonne Landry knows a lot about. Tonight, on this New Orleans News exclusive, we'll find out what the future of the commodity, called funny, truly is. I'm Yvonne Landry. I'm the owner of Lanoui Comedy Theater, and we have a five-level training program called the Comedy Conservatory. We use improvisational comedy to get people up on stage, and by the time that they're done with our program, uh, they're at a professional level. We are the only training center of our kind in the Gulf South. We get students here at the Lanoui Comedy Conservatory from all walks of life. Some of them are just shy individuals who have a hard time in their interpersonal relationships. Some of them are business people who do presentations and so need to be uh, a little quicker on their feet. I think the reason that America has a better sense of humor than the rest of the world is our diversity. You know, we're such a melting pot and we have to get along with other people here in this country and so hilarity just ensues from that. So for example, we have this Chinese businessman right now who is just learning what comedy is. He needs to learn that before he can learn how to find the truth and how to find the funny himself. And it's been difficult. Difficult indeed, Yvonne. Here's an example of this quote, difficult, unquote, displayed during a comedic exercise. Uh, I take my shoe. I think I'm beginning to understand what makes funny. But sometimes I miss. When I laugh, other people don't laugh. And after I laugh, uh, they laugh at me. What appears to be an innocent disconnect between this man and his funny bone turns out to be something much more sinister as we probe deeper into the interview. Listen as he alludes to funny labor camps filled with Americans paid in food along with genocide of the unfunny. So maybe we can bring in the American consultants uh, and they can get paid uh, with food. When China takes over the world, uh, funny people uh, will be allowed to live. We have no way of knowing if this was an attempt at a joke or if he was serious. Either way, it's not funny. We have a lot of exports in this country and comedy is the one that has not been touched yet. And so China is really aggressively looking at the United States to export our comedy. All Chinese people can manufacture anything. Maybe I can take it back and uh, make something out of it. But manufacturing comedy is not as easy as it looks, as shown by this example of an improv routine gone very bad. Even though this is his sixth week of class, watch as he mistakes this comedic exercise as a proposition for a sexy time on stage with his improv partner. Thank you. Yes, and I feel closer to you with every layer of clothing that you're taking off. Indeed, it is as painful to watch this blatant lack of funniness as we assume it is to live it. But at the same time, it reassures us with the fact of just how far behind Asia is in the funny arms race. Okay, okay, see, thank you. <laughs> Comedy is our only hope in this country. People don't bomb us because we're funnier than the rest of the world. You know, people don't cry when they're dancing. They also don't drop bombs when they're laughing. Profounder words have seldom been spoken. Thanks, Yvonne and Londawee, for advancing the quality of our funny far ahead of the rest of the world.